Thank you for tuning in. This is the second video in a three-part series where we will be building the frame for the mid-century modern style bed. To view these build plans, please visit buildxyz.xyz. During the first video, I covered how to make these solid wood strips. I started off by building the side assembly. Here you can see the solid wood edging that I applied. I glue and tape solid wood edging on and allow four hours to dry. After the tape has been removed, I run it through the table saw to trim off the excess solid wood edging. I chose to run a one and a half inch deep curve along the side of the bed. By clamping down an extra piece of trim, I was able to trace a pattern. Using a jaw stand to support my work, I used a bandsaw to cut the curve. I used a belt sander to clean up any imperfections. And then I used that piece as a template to cut the other side. And then I glued the tops and the bottom solid wood edging with clamps. When joining two pieces of edging, you can use a miter joint and place a clamp right on the joint. This is what that joint will look like in your final product. I use a crosscut sled and I support the workpiece on the other end to trim off the edges. I use a flush trim jig to trim down any proud edges. Then I give the face a quick sand with 220 grit sandpaper. The side assembly also consists of some dimensional lumber. I like to run it through the planer a few times before using it on furniture projects. I run a dado through the bottom which will later receive a plywood support. I then cut the dimensional lumber down to size using a miter saw. The upper side assembly will be joined to the 2x6 with biscuits. The side assembly lower portion has a 1.5 by 1.5 inch piece of spruce to give it some stability on the bottom. I use clamps to hold the piece in place and then I use brad nails. Afterwards the clamps can be removed. The two portions of the side assembly can then be glued and clamped together. Allow some time for this assembly to set and dry. The side assembly is complete and I give everything a once over with 220 grit sandpaper. The front of the frame is much the same as the side. I again use biscuits to join a 1 by 4 inch piece of pine to the plywood front assembly. This time I only use clamps to hold it in place while it's drying because I don't want any fasteners going through the front. The center I-beam is made by 3 quarter inch birch plywood 
capped with 2x4s. To provide for wheels in the drawer assembly, I had to cut out material from the bottom 2x4. I run glue along the dado we cut earlier in the 2x4 and use a dead blow hammer to seat everything in place. And I repeat for the top 2x4. When everything is seated, I used opposing clamps for the glue up. I put another piece of solid wood edging on the front as you will see this between the drawers. And I'm ready to spray my finish. For more information on my finishing process, please see part 1 of this series on making the headboard. I measure and pre-drill all my holes to avoid splitting and aid in reassembly. I chose to fit and assemble everything first outside my shop, close to my tools. I first mounted the front assembly to the main center I-beam. Having a large square during these steps is pretty crucial. I used corner clamps to hold the corners nice and square so I could pre-drill and mount the angle brackets. After the sides have been mounted, use a tape and measure across the diagonals and make sure they're the same. This will ensure your frame is square. I made a quick jig to ensure that the cross braces are always mounted with the screws in the same location. I then mounted the rear cross braces just for now. I used a jaw stand as a stop block and quickly cut 10 slats. I ran a line down the slats to mark where the ribbon will go. Then I spaced out the slats using a 1x4 offcut. I used some of this inexpensive hobby ribbon stapled to the slats so they can be rolled up and easier to transport. Then I rebuilt it in its final location. Thanks for watching this video, if you liked it click subscribe and I always appreciate the feedback.